With the advancement of apps like Playback and Prime, is Ableton Live even still relevant for worship leaders in 2022? Well, spoiler alert, I think it is. And in this video, I'm going to share eight reasons why I think Ableton Live is still highly useful and relevant for worship leaders. Now, before I do that, though, I want to let you know about a free resource that I put together for you as a worship leader to help you figure out which app you should use on stage. If you head to multitracks.app, I condense my entire one hour and 10 minute video down to a few questions in a quiz. And if you answer those questions, let me know exactly what features, what needs that you have when it comes to an app to use on stage for tracks. Then I'll email Tell you your results and tell you exactly what app you should use. Plus, you get access to all the research that I did for about a week and a half to prepare for my massive shootout video where I compared Ableton Live, Prime, and Playback, which again, I'll link in the description of this video to that. But if you want to get the quiz, save yourself tons of time and effort uh, and lots of wasted money trying all the apps out, then head to multitracks.app to get that free resource. Okay, so let's dive in. So the first reason that I believe that Ableton Live is still relevant relevant for worship leaders in 2022 is the ability to edit guide cues and song section names. Here's what I mean by that. So uh, I've got a song pulled up here. This is actually a song I purchased from multitracks.com uh, in an Ableton Live file. I've done a little bit of work to format it. Um, and if you look right here, you see we've got this interlude. Now, this is what the multitracks uh, engineers decided to name this. They said, hey, we're going to call this an interlude. Um, but what if your team calls it an instrumental? What if your team calls it a turnaround? If you're using playback or prime, you're stuck. If you're using Ableton Live, though, this is pretty simple. So I can go in here and say, let's call this turn. Okay, let's relabel our markers track. And then I want to go over here and I'm going to use my free tracks template, which you can get by heading to from studio to stage.com slash template completely for free. It's going to help you format your songs, build your sets very quickly. Um, then I'm going to go over here and go to my guide queue section of this and let's see if we can find turn. Okay. So there's turnaround and there's turn. Let's go with turn. So I'm going to drag this in and I'm going to replace that guide queue name. Now that's incredibly helpful. You may be going, I don't, you know, necessarily have the need to do that. I'm happy to adjust to what multitracks engineers or the loop community engineers have named the file. And that's perfectly fine. But let's talk about our next feature, which is somewhat combined to this. And I think there's a, a bigger use case for this than this one. Uh, and number two is the ability to combine or shorten song sections. And this is what I mean by this. So let's take a look at this song. And if you've ever downloaded a song from either of these companies, then you know uh, one of the biggest issues you you often have is finding um, you know a chart that matches the multi-track uh, or um, having the song sections match match what you would you know typically talk about in your band. So in this song, we've got two bridges. Um, but maybe the way your band thinks about this, maybe the way you've charted this, maybe the way you communicate this, this is only one bridge for you. So if I'm using Ableton Live, I can go in and click this locator, delete this, just drag this over. And now I have one bridge. I no longer have two bridges. I have one bridge. So we just say, hey, we're going from the course. We get into the bridge. We're good to go. Uh, so that might be super, super helpful for you. So we can combine uh, song sections. We could even go in and say, um, you know, let's take the bridge out of here or let's cut out this little breakdown here, um, uh, you know, between this bridge and that bridge uh, to make that a little easier. Or let's go back to what Multitracks had, which was two bridges. Maybe we want to make this four. Well, we could go in and we could say, let's actually make this four. Now, I could remove song sections in both Playback and Prime. Uh, I can add song sections, but I can't basically like reformat song sections to say now we're doing four bridges or now we're only doing one bridge, which is which is great. Now, another huge feature to me uh, about why uh, another reason that makes Ableton Live really, really great for worship leaders is the ability to remove an instrument from a specific section. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So let's keep working with our bridge here. I'm going to expand uh, all these tracks. Let's take a look at these. And typically when it comes to stems, uh, particularly stems in a worship set, you're, you're go just going to see tons and tons of content. Um, and so if I look, let's even just look at like our keys content here, our piano, organ stuff. You'll see in the bridge, we've got a lot of uh, different keys parts. Uh, we've got this keys four part here. 
I like it, but I actually don't want it to come in the, the first part of this bridge. I want it to wait and come in later. So what I can do if I'm using Ableton Live is I can actually take this and delete that part, but leave that whole song section intact. So yes, in playback and prime, I can go and delete that section. But what if I want to keep it and only remove a part from a specific instrument from that song section? Ableton Live allows me to do that, whereas those apps don't. Uh, now, here's another really, really big feature. Let's go in. Let's make a song edit here. Um, let's get rid of these extra bridge markers here that I added. Um, let's say we're running short on time. And to do this, we're going to cut our first bridge. And we're going to just go into the second bridge. Now, that's stuff that both Playback and Prime can do. We can make the song edits. But what they can't do is this, the ability to apply crossfades to edits. And this is huge. Now, if I go and select... I typically select about a measure on either side of a song edit that I do. Then in Ableton Live, I can use the Create Fades shortcut, Command Option F, to create a crossfade between my chorus section and my bridge section. So without having to um, make an edit and just deal with the results of that, and, and you'll, you'll see this a lot of times maybe in drum parts where a drummer is, is like swelling. Maybe there's a cymbal swell or something. Drummer's swelling and then you suddenly edit that and it's like the swell stops halfway through. These are things we can fix. These are problems we can solve only if we're using a full-blown doll like Ableton Live to make those edits, okay? Uh, so that's a huge feature for me. The next feature is the ability to quickly use content without uploading to a cloud. And this is, this is really, really big. Um, both uh, playback and Prime are available on the Mac, which is great. Uh, and I'll talk more about that in just a second. But one of the things that I think that makes them uh, still very young and still very new to this process is the fact that for me to use a song in either of these on my computer, I can't go file and open. Uh, I can't go to my browser and just drag files into my song like this. I have to go upload a file. I have to go to my uh, Safari Chrome, go to my web browser, upload a file to their cloud, I have to wait for their cloud to process it 10 to 15 minutes, maybe shorter if I'm lucky, maybe longer if it's a busy day. Uh, wait for the cloud to process it. Wait for that to load into their apps. Then I have to go in. I have to add song sections. I have to add uh, markers. I have to add tempo, time signature changes. Hope and pray that I entered all that data right. And then I can finally load that into my app, even my app on my computer. Now, I understand why they do this. They were built to be mobile first, and it requires that. But I think now that these apps are, are on the desktop, they need to be updated so that you can drag files directly into your app and they just work. And then maybe read their information on the app and spit that back to the server. So free suggestion for Loop Community and Multitracks when it comes to Prime and Playback. If we can make that happen on the Mac app, then things will be a whole lot smoother. But in the meantime, um, if you are using uh, your own content often, if you're buying songs from Loop Community and hope to use them in playback or buying songs from Multitracks and hope to use them in Prime, you are going to save so much time if you use a full-blown doll like Ableton Live because you just, again, you just look at it, you just load songs in and they work, which is great. Uh, the next reason that uh, I think Ableton Live is still relevant for worship leaders in 2022 is the ability to use an app designed specifically for desktop use. Here's what I mean by that. Both Playback and Prime have apps that run on a Mac. I would not say they are Mac apps. They're not Mac native apps. And what I mean by that is they're apps that can run on your computer, but they're not designed and optimized to run on your computer. So often you'll see keyboard shortcuts missing that you would use in Ableton Live, for instance, or across multiple computer, uh, uh, multiple programs on one computer to get access to keyboard shortcuts, for example. Um, uh, menu options are missing. Uh, menu and features are buried behind uh, touch first things that make sense and that's what they should be uh, on a iOS device like an iPad or iPhone, but just don't make sense on a computer. In fact, one of my pet peeves in playback in particular is the ability to have to long press on the edit button to enter different edit modes, whereas that should be a right click. Uh, that should be a menu option, something like that. So if you're looking for an app that's optimized for a desktop use uh, on Mac, then uh, I would suggest Ableton. Now, on the lines of that, number seven reason why, and I know there's a few of you out there that fall into this category, not a lot, but a few, uh, is the ability to run on Windows PC. So if you're an Ableton Live, uh, if you're a worship leader that wants to run tracks on stage and you're using a Windows PC, well, unfortunately, you can't use Playback or Prime unless you use an iOS device, iPad or iPhone. Um, but 
uh, if you have a Windows computer and a Windows computer that, that runs fine and has plenty of power, you can load uh, Ableton Live on it. And when you purchase a copy of Ableton Live, it's available and has a license both for Mac and PC that you can use. So if you're a Windows user out there, I, I see that hand. I see a few of you out there. Then you can use Ableton Live. And Ableton Live is very much still relevant to you as a worship leader in 2022. And finally, number eight, I've lumped these together. Uh, the ability to record or edit audio or MIDI or use keys sounds live. It's super important. You know, often I'll see um, um, playback or I'll see prime out of feature. And if you look at the comments on social, people will say, oh, Ableton is dead. No one's going to use Ableton anymore. And I always think, but you're forgetting that this is a full blown doll. I can record, I can edit audio, I can record MIDI, I can edit MIDI, and I can run key sounds live with it. So I hope that Playback and Prime continue to add features, but when it comes to a full-blown, full-fledged DAW, Ableton Live is the only one that can record and edit audio, record and edit MIDI, and run key sounds live. And I've said this in a lot of videos, and I've said this many times before, I hope that Playback and Prime don't add any of those features. As soon as you see those features added, just know the company's starting to go a direction that they shouldn't. They're trying to do more than they should, uh, and eventually they're just going to build a lesser Ableton Live. I think the beauty of Playback and Prime and their initial creation was just a simple app that runs tracks, and I hope they stick to that core mission as opposed to trying to become a full-blown DAW. So that's eight reasons why I believe... Ableton Live is still very much relevant for worship leaders in 2022. Again, if you're not convinced or you're not sure for your specific setup which app you should use, head to multitracks.app. It's completely free. Put together a quiz, which is a couple of questions where you can answer those questions. And I will tell you exactly what app you should use. Uh, save yourself the weeks and uh, of... Um, um, of learning that I did, the weeks of research I did, the hundreds of dollars I spent to subscribe to both apps to unlock features. And I'll just tell you exactly what you need. So save yourself some time, some effort, some money, and head to multitracks.app. Then again, if you're an Ableton Live user, you like the way this file is formatted, you want uh, access to this free tracks template that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, then head to from studio to stage.com slash template. And that's where you're gonna get uh, this template, get it completely for free, and it's really going to unlock the ability for you to format all your songs and then to quickly build a set using those formatted songs. And finally, if you're a worship leader, you want to um, uh, stay kind of in the process and know what the best thing you should use on uh, on stage to run tracks. You want to learn more about Ableton Live um, and using multi-tracks content and stems on stage. Then do me a favor, just hit subscribe. It costs you nothing. Hit subscribe to this channel because I post a new video every single day, 10 a.m. Central. And on Wednesdays, I devote Wednesdays just to content for worship leaders. So every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central is a piece of content just for you as a worship leader. And every other day of the week is content for everyone. Uh, all has to do with using Ableton Live on stage to run tracks and to perform on stage. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support. If you haven't watched the massive shootout video that I did last week, please check that out. Uh, it, 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 it really, I mean, it was an amazing amount of effort that went into it, but I hope and pray it's super helpful to you and saves your, uh, your ministry and yourself, uh, lots of effort and time. So thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.